So today, what I'm going to be showing you is how to create fluid that will work inside a pipe. Now, I created a video a while ago, and this was of fluid inside a pipe, and quite a lot of people didn't know how to do it. And in the comments, I, I wrote about how to do it, but today I thought I'd do it in a video tutorial. So I would recommend that you learn how to do fluid simulations in other tutorials, as I will be covering all the settings you need, but you may get a better explanation of the whole fluid simulation technique in other tutorials, and this will mainly just focus on how to achieve uh, fluid in a pipe. I have uh, a stretched cube here, and this will act as our domain. I'm just going to change the mode of it to wire, so we can see the objects inside. And we've got a pipe, which is just regular polygons. And then we have a little sphere that fits inside the pipe, and this will act as our fluid inflow. And I have resized the domain, this outer box, which will be the container for all our fluid, to be the exact size we need it, because if it's any bigger, it'll use more memory than we need. So the first thing we're going to do is go over to the physics panel, select our domain, click on fluid, and we're going to change it to domain. And the only thing we're going to change at the minute is changing the display mode to final. We're then going to select our little sphere, again click on fluid, and this will be our inflow. And all I'm going to change on this is give it a, give it a bit of uh, downwards thrust, so it'll be minus 0 0.5. That'll just mean it'll move downwards a bit more quickly. And now for the important settings, and this really, if you know how to do fluid simulations already, this is really the only important uh, setting you need to know. I'm going to click on fluid, and because we want the uh, liquid to collide with it, we're going to click on obstacle. Now, I'm quickly going to show you what happens if you don't do this. Results you may have got trying to get this to work. So I'm going to click the domain, and then bake it. And then cancel that. And if I move forward, you'll see it's just done something very weird and gone to a point. And it'll do this every time. And what's basically happening is because we have our pipe set to volume in the volume initialization uh, setting, it is going to look at this as a solid object. So it's going to act like it's you know made of solid concrete. And obviously you can't have any liquid inside, and it effectively breaks the simulation. So the only thing you need to change is change it to shell. And this means it will see the hollow parts of the mesh all the way through, and should act correctly. If you choose both, it also won't work. Shell is the only option it will work with. So now if I select our um, domain, which actually turns into the fluid when we run the simulation, leaving our little sphere intact, I'm going to run it again, and then I'm just going to stop it because we don't need to see the whole thing. And if we run it forward, although it's blocky, we can see that it's filling up the pipe. Now, effectively, that is all you need to know about how to get fluid working in uh, a pipe. And if you just up the um, resolution of the fluid, you would get better and better results. But a few more tips that I've got are for the actual object we're using, which is the pipe. It still looks a bit jagged. So if I added a subsurf modifier on, and it makes it all smooth, then the fluid simulation won't actually see this subsurf modifier. It will only see the exact geometry on it, and we can't even try and move this above it, because this fluid simulation can only see geometry. So whatever this is, that's what it can see, but it can't see the subsurf. So what we're going to do is just apply it. So now we've got a high-res pipe, and if I were to bake, bake that again, the fluid would now match it. Now what I'm actually going to do, this is still on the uh, wire setting from before, because that was the domain. I'll set it to solid. I'll then press T to bring up the toolbar, and we're just going to change it to smooth shading. I'm then going to go back to the physics panel. Now the animation I did, it had its re resolution at 250. I'm going to set this at 120. You can see the memory's gone up, which is why it was important to resize that domain in the beginning. I'm going to press back, and then bake. And once it's gone through a bit of this, I'll come back. So I've let it go a while now. Not all the way, there's no real point. And you can see it goes up to this point, 
and then that's how far I got. Now, we're getting a few errors here, where the fluid appears to be coming out of the um, pipe, and I think I did have that on my final animation, and I think that's just something that happens. You might be able to get rid of it by um, adding another level of subdivision to this, but I think also just upping the resolution of the fluid will also help to get rid of this. This is just where it's made errors in the simulation. But the main problem I want to focus on is something I covered in a separate tutorial, and it's how to get rid of these horrible jagged edges when fluid hits um, any kind of object really, but it, you can specifically see this when it's a curved object, we get this horrible jagged looking edge, and even when it's set to smooth shading, it doesn't really get rid of it. And as I said, I did another tutorial on this, but I'm just going to quickly add a smooth modifier, set this to 2.1, and repeat this four times and you can see we've now got really smooth fluid. A few final things I did after that. I added a solidify modifier to the uh, pipe so we've got a bit of thickness to it. Might be a bit too much. And then because we're getting a bit of shading artifacts on the edge I'm just going to add in an edge split modifier and that just fixes uh, the edges there. It just tells it to split it on any angle which is above 30. A few other render settings you may want to remember is just that when you're rendering the fluid you're going to want to um, make sure the material can receive transparent shadows. And if it can't do this, presumably you want to see the fluid inside, so say this was set to glass like in my example, then if you didn't have receive transparent on the fluid wouldn't be able to get the light properly through the glass and it wouldn't illuminate properly. So that's just another option you may want to remember. Other than that, that's all you need to know about getting fluid to work in a pipe or any other container really. And the important option is on the pipe, make sure the volume initialization is set to shell. By default, it's set to volume. This won't work. Neither will both, only shell will. Anyway, I hope that has helped some people. I did get quite a few requests for this tutorial. If you have any suggestions on what I can do better, or on any tutorial suggestions, I'm always open to that. Please leave them in the comments, and I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.